and go, hey, this is it for me. You can always chip away and hop out. Anyway, we've got uh, a very exciting, well, I shouldn't say exciting, it's probably the wrong adjective. We have a very interesting, highly qualified guest now who is, uh, is one of the leaders in robotics and education, Dr. Damien Key. Damien, welcome to the studio. Thanks welcome, so much, Wayne. Damien. It's good to be here. Yes, it, well, it is good to be here. Everyone should be good to be here. Now, the uh, Damien has been involved. I've met Damien probably eight years ago. I Something like that. It's been a while, hasn't it? It has, it has. And we were out at a uh, RoboCup tournament at the uh, University of Queensland. Yep, that's right. Yes. Now, we'll, we'll unpack a bit of that area to start with, but, but Damien, as I said, uh, your PhD, Damien, is in... Um, so, funnily enough, uh, my PhD is actually in humanoid robotics. So, when I started university, I started with a degree in uh, electrical engineering. And then, as I was going through my um, degree, um, I started looking at, you know, what would I do after I finished? And, you know, it was offered to me to, to do a, a PhD. So, I was looking at something like a humanoid robotics. And so, looking at how to get robots to walk around. But uh, during my studies, um, while I you know, enjoyed the research, I actually spent a lot of time doing all the outreach programs. So, we'd get kids in, we'd run workshops, we'd do robotics. We teach them STEM things, and so that, that's kind of where my passion lies nowadays, is is getting this information out and teaching kids about robotics. Yeah, it is. It's it's so important. And and I must admit, uh, my wife, Dr. Chris Chalmers, has worked with Damien a fair Done bit a lot as with well. Chris, yes. yes, yeah. Chris runs the robotics at QUT program, so I think we have about. Well, I shouldn't say we. I always try and cash in on it, <laughs> but I think there's there's about 70 schools involved in that project now, and it is just going through the roof. And I'm sure you've seen the same, Damien. How much students oh. and parents and teachers just in the last couple of years robotics in particular but just stem in general has really taken off in, in terms of schools it's, it's great to see that yes. schools are recognizing this now as a, as a really good way to get kids engaged in, in learning oh so much so so much so and also the other thing too you uh, mentioned humanoid robotics and uh, and chris is involved in a and ed i'm doing the chris show now is involved in an education uh, research project with about four universities and it's mainly coming out of adelaide where they're doing the uh the now robots. Yeah, that, so they're great little robots that have just come on the market in the last couple of years. Um, when I first started with my humanoid um, robotics, that's probably 10 or 15 years ago, we had to make everything from scratch. You know, they, oh, you couldn't wow. go out and buy one of the ones yes. that you can nowadays. Yes. So we, we, you know, did a lot of work in trying to get these up and running. But it's great to see the the, the new NAOs especially that yeah. are coming out that schools can can jump on board with. Yeah, it, it is. It's fascinating. And just a little side note there, Chris was telling us that. Uh, they're teaching their NAO robot uh, a language, and 20% of their school population uh, down in Adelaide is Indigenous, and they're actually teaching the Indigenous language. Oh, that's uh, fantastic! Isn't that's a that, great idea. Isn't that just so? Br oh, that mm. yeah, made me yeah, got goosebumps when that, I heard that. That's mm. awesome, it and because is. there's so many different dialects to the Indigenous languages too. So oh, it that is. It is, that's it is. Awesome. and just to have that school community have a robot that that talks, they can communicate yeah. with, and that they can oh. program, and that they can you know get it to do all sorts of different things. It is. It's phenomenal. So so you would have... So uh, your journey was straight through school then into university? Straight through school, um, straight into university. So I finished my, uh, my bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, uh, straight into my PhD. So then once I finished that, um, then started up my own business, just, you know, kind of working on getting more of this stuff out into to schools and the communities. Oh, fantastic. So so we do know that, 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 that you're highly committed to the STEM and the robotics areas. So, but... Just a little run through. You, you've got a business called Domobotics. Did that's I correct. pronounce that correctly? Yes, that's I'm right. always hopeless at names. <laughs> I get my kids' names wrong. So, uh, what what's the thrust of the business? So, the the main aim is really to get more kids involved in science and technology, and we do that in a couple of different ways. We we work directly with kids, um, showing them robotics, showing them technology, showing them programming. Do a lot of work with teachers as well giving them the confidence to be able to, to run it in class. While I love working with kids, I can only work with so many kids, but if I teach a teacher how to run this stuff in class, then they can teach their class, you know, 30 kids every single year, and it can just spread out. A couple of other things that I, I, you know, I do as well, I do some curriculum development. I'm really lucky I get to travel all over the world working with teachers, you know, in far-flung places, which is a, a lot of fun. But, you know, the, the main aim is really just to get more of this stuff out and get teachers comfortable with it. You know, a lot of teachers see this stuff and they think, oh, programming, robotics, that's just, it sounds too complicated. Yes. So I really want to show them that this stuff is not that difficult. It's not that scary. And, and, and I think that's it too. We, we always put those barriers up, well, especially teaching. You know, you, you always have been brought up in the mindset that, hey, I've got to know everything. And if I don't, I'm going to look 
well, bad in front of my students. They won't respect me. But, but now, and the research is coming through there, you, you really are facilitators and co-creators uh, oh, of definitely. knowledge in that. So many young kids come up with solutions that you would never have thought about. Yep. Uh, we, we really find, too, especially with the pace of technology, as a teacher, you can't be an expert in absolutely everything. And, and the common phrase that, that's thrown around nowadays is that um, teaching of old used to be the, the sage on the stage. You knew everything. You stood up the front oh, and you imparted your stage. knowledge. But now it's uh, moving more towards a guide on the side where you work along with your, te- uh, with your students and you structure your, your lessons to learn alongside them. So you provide the scaffolding and you give them the encouragement and help them solve problems. But you don't have to know everything. No, you don't. It's, uh, well, and as I always say, welcome to the world of Google. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there, there's, it's out there. And uh, now with uh, we have uh, the, oh, I was going to say the F1 in schools. Boy, I hate getting old. That's a great competition. <laughs> but we have, oh, we, have the, it all. Uh, we have the first Lego League competition coming up out at Caboolture. But tell us a little bit about the RoboCup. So the RoboCup Junior is the one that I've been involved with for, for many, many years. Um, so we, we run a competition. It's, it's actually international, but we've got a very good Australian um, competition. We have uh, regional competitions that are run at you know one or two little schools in the, the middle of Queensland, all the way through to state competitions, national competitions. And the aim is that we break it down into three different divisions. So we've got um, this uh, division of dancing robots, we've got a division of uh, rescue robots, and a division of soccer robots. And having those three divisions really opens it up for a lot of kids that even if they have just a kind of a, a, you know, a tasting interest in, in robotics, they can find something that they're, they're interested in doing. And so really encouraging these kids to come up with these new solutions to put together different things. I've been doing the competition now for, for over 15 years and it still amazes me every year the, the kind of things that kids come up with and, and bring along to the competition. So it's really good to see that. We're trying to encourage it as, as much as possible, get these kids uh, solving problems. And that's you know, the main thrust of it all, solving mm. problems. That's it, problem solving. If you can achieve that, their, their kids have got their own future. They can work it out. They can problem solve what they need to do. The uh, Now, with STEM and where it's moving so fast and that, there's a lot of resources out there, Damien. And I saw this and I always say to schools uh, that sit back we had a we had a young uh, phd candidate out here from tufts university uh, and he used the uh, i think it was the uh, apologize brian if I, if I get this wrong but it was about the a room model uh, it was whether it was had an easy access so the floor was low, low the floor, ceiling was high, high ceiling, walls, walls. Yes, yes yeah and he used it and he actually did a, a lot of stuff he's got a website up called paperbots.org that showed a lot yes. of engineering practices with with just what you can do with uh, very minimal resources what's your if you had to pick some technologies that classes could or students or not students but schools could invest in what would you be saying to them so that, that's a really tough question. There's a lot of really good products out there. I mean, at the end of the day, it's uh, what we're trying to teach here is ideas and concepts. So a lot of people say, oh, should I buy this? Should I buy that? It's not about the specific platform that you're, you're using. What we really want to do is use robots to teach things like computational thinking, problem solving, those sorts of things. The ones that are really popular at the moment, the ones that the schools are getting a lot of use out, um, the Lego Mindstorms is really, really popular. We've got Vex IQ Robotics. We've got Ozobots. We've got B-Bots, Probots, Bluebots. There's wow. a ton of different ones out there. And, and as I encourage all schools, is it, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which one you get as long as you're getting something that your teachers are comfortable using. There's no point buying all this stuff if it's just going to sit on a shelf for, for three terms of the year. Yes. So you want to find platforms that your teachers are comfortable using and that they're going to get a lot of use out of it. Because as I keep um, harping on to teachers, it's about um, what you're teaching. It's not how you teach it. So we use robots to teach science and technology. Oh, excellent. And I think that's a really, really valid point. I mean, that's what, what drives everyone. It's it's opening up those concepts and getting students and teachers engaged. The amount of robotics clubs now that we see starting up at schools... Oh, springing up everywhere. ...is yes. phenomenal. Our local school down the road, you know, had 80 students in a robotics club. They only had 800 kids, so that's 10% yep. of their population. And wouldn't. they're starting to have to turn some away and scheduling yeah, them out. Yeah, that's it. And they'll spread. I mean, we've got the... Coda dojos happening everywhere 
now. So, so Damien, your point before about it's just going through the roof really is. Well, we may end it there. I think everybody got a great taste of, of robotics in education, the future. Uh, and by all means, Damien, we'd love to have you back on. We've got so much to talk about. Oh, I'd love to come back. Thanks yeah, very much for having me. Next, next time we'll dedicate more. He pops around the world everywhere giving his advice. I, I wanted to touch base on the last time we were talking. It took us about four shows to get Damien here, but, but then he was off to the States and was off to helping States, yeah. in somewhere there with some huge tournament. Over in Louisville for the, the VEX uh, World Robotics Championship, so helping out there. It was yeah, yeah, a lot it, of fun. But yeah, it's taken us a couple of months before we've been able to lock yeah. in a date. <laughs> 